Welcome to the Money and Flow podcast, where avocado toast and stocks meet. Did you know that women and women of color don't talk that much about money? And did you also know that the health and wellness community is a $600 billion business? And did you also know that women aren't in the forefront when it comes to decision making with our health and wealth? We're here to change that. This is the first podcast that focuses on wellness and money. This podcast is targeted for women and women of color, specifically in their 20s and 30s. And without further ado, your host, Eugenie George. Hey, this is Eugenie George, host of the Money and Flow podcast. I'm super excited that you're here because it is Black History Month. So for today's mini Black History Month tip, we are going to talk about Madam C.J. Walker. For some reason, I don't see enough of her during Black History Month, but she has paved the way for African-Americans, for women. She is the first self-made millionaire so yeah i know y'all were thinking isn't that little kardashian girl jenner then she made that million uh no 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 this is a woman who started from scratch being a sharecropper and going from being a sharecropper has some really ratchet people in her life trying to block her but in the late 1800s early 1900s this woman managed to make a million dollars, okay? Now, if that is not a financial wrinkle in time, I don't know what is, okay? So we're gonna talk about that. And then we're gonna talk about our ancestral money story, why the South is still crushing it when it comes to female entrepreneurs. And what does this mean for our money story and wealth consciousness? So at the end, I'll make sure that We talk a little bit about financial BFFs. Everyone knows if you've listened to the podcast before and if you're new, welcome. We talk about finding financial BFFs because at the end of the day, you need people to help you with your money. Yes. Do I believe in DIYing my finances? Yeah, I do to an extent because DIYing your finances can keep you trapped and it can especially keep you trapped if you don't understand your ancestral story. Let's take a trip down memory lane, a wrinkle in finance time. Madam C.J. Walker, a.k.a. Sarah Breedlove, had a terrible, terrible childhood, okay? When she was seven, both of her parents died. And then after she was seven, she moved in with her sister. Her sister's husband, her brother-in-law, was abusive. And she moved from Louisiana to Mississippi to work in the back of the house. Next thing you know, she got married. That guy, he was meh, you know, but she married at a very young age. When she was married to this guy, he died. So she had to figure some stuff out again. And she ended up marrying uh, another guy named Charles Joseph Walker. That's why she named her company Madam C.J. Walker, right? Charles Joseph, C.J. She moved to St. Louis where her brothers lived and she found work at a a laundromat and she was earning more than a dollar a day. I shouldn't have said laundromat. They called it laundress, laundress. And she, Madam C.J. Walker, worked at the laundromat she wanted to make more money she figured out a way she worked with this lady named annie malone they created a magical formula let me explain it i'm not going to go too too deep into the story but what you need to know is that with that terrible traumatic traumatic childhood that she had she was able to become a hair culturist she was able to move multiple places. She moved, she lived in New York. She lived in Denver. She lived in Indianapolis. She built a hair product facility. She built the first black hair salon school. So 
if you can just think about the capacity of somebody doing that in the early 1900s and did not have any money, look, y'all, you know we can turn water into rosé. So y'all think about it. If someone like that had the ability to figure out this these problems and help black women, there are multiple ways that we can do the same. So some of you have heard, and if you haven't heard, uh, I always like to talk about a money our money story. And if you haven't heard what a money story is, I'll make sure I put that in the show notes. But our money story is looking at the past, looking at our parents' past, looking at our past and seeing where our money story helps us and hurts us. So if we go back and look at our ancestry, there's a lot of really terrible, terrible things that have happened in the black community and the Latinx community and the Asian American community in the Native American community. In fact, I was actually interviewing someone for the book that I'm writing and it was really interesting because she kept saying, you know, I'm really good at saving, but I, I'm really, really good at saving. I said, that's really great. I'm glad that's a part of your money story because your parents taught you how to save money and have an allowance and what that allowance means. But next thing you know, she said, well, I, don't, I never take care of myself. I don't buy glasses. I, I hope that I buy glasses. Then we actually uncovered, y'all, come on now. She, her family's from, did the Japanese internment camps. So her parents had everything and was taken, everything was taken away from them when they were in uh, Angel Island. Didn't even have any rights. So please don't tell me that we don't have an ancestral money store because that affects women as a whole. It don't matter if you're black, white, red, yellow, brown. It is, it affects all of us. And because it affects us, we don't know why there are certain systems in place that we think are keeping us down. It is because there are so many things in our DNA that we aren't even aware of. So when we think about our money story, we do have to do a lot more digging because in order for us to think about building wealth, we have to actually do a lot more work. I hate to say it, but if if you're looking at who owns most of the world's wealth, most of the time they are not women of color. There is a small group of people. So, you know, you got your Melanie Hobson's and you have your Oprah's and you have your Jay-Z and Beyonce. But if you think about how many, the percentage of that, that's still, I don't even, that, I don't even think that's a full percent. Actually, it probably is 1% because if we look at like Nigeria and stuff like that, we could put some of the billionaires in the same category. I'd probably say 1%, 1 or 2%. But anywho, yeah, that's a lot, a lot of growth in areas of growth. And I think what made Sarah so unique is that she knew that her parents were slaves and they became sharecroppers. She saw how even for age zero to seven, how they operated. And that was able to help her build her own story, her own money story. So I think that's one of the things that we should do is, you know, if you have any time right now, take out a piece of paper and say, how is my money affecting me? And just write, how is my money affecting my parents? And write that out. How did, what did my parents teach me about money? Write that out. What were some of the negative things that my parents said about money? What were or are, what are the negative things I say about my money? Having those pieces of evidence, understanding my story, understanding CJ Walker's story, there is no limit to how we can create wealth, but we do have to, and I hate to say this, we have to do more work because we have to, one, be the leading person in whatever industry that we're in, even if it's creative, if it's medical, we do have to work much harder. And then two, we have to be able to stand our ground even when other people are ignorant. And lastly, we have to also explain to a lot of people what the problems are, be it gender or race 
or class, we have to explain those issues. And I know that that's not the best topic to talk about. And I also know that people are thinking, what the heck does that have to do with investing? And a lot of times I'm probably one of the only podcasts that has that I put everything under investing because these are pieces and tools that people are not talking about at all. Yeah, we're talking about diversity and inclusiveness, but we're not even acknowledging how do we include people? How do we understand people's stories? And why are we separating that? That bothers me so much. And I want us to all have the tools and the accessibility to make sure that we're able to tap into that. So, We got Madam C.J. Walker. How does that money story weave into ours? We can literally look at our money story and C.J. Walker's and see where there are some parallels. There are lots of parallels that even I, as someone who, I mean, I was born in the 80s, have with C.J. Walker. And how does her legacy help me become a better person, help me become a better business person, help me become a better tribe leader. I don't know if I'm a tribe leader, but you know what I mean? We need to also acknowledge that depending on where you live, the location that where you live, you are better able to access a community. Yes. Do I think New York is dope? I think New York is probably one of the best places. And if you're a creative and you're trying to start stand up, I say go for it. I'm not saying don't do not not live your dream, but I want to say that being in certain areas where there are people of color, where you can create a community, you need to start thinking about where do you need to live in order for you to manifest your greatness. So I started my business in Texas, and a lot of people don't know that, but Texas is the number one the number one place for black women to start a business. And I think the rationale, the reasoning behind that is because there's just so many African-Americans and a lot of those African-Americans want stability. Having a business creates stability and has the freedom and the income to do so. So I think about that all the time, even though right now I'm in Philly I think having those principles and having the Southern principles does help, all right? That doesn't mean I say only live in the South, but I'm saying if you're in technology and you feel like Silicon Valley is not listening to you, maybe you need to go to Houston and they have a tech startup, or maybe you need to go to Philadelphia and they have a tech startup. So really start thinking about how can you pivot? How can you use your expertise, your skills, to find your tribe. There is no, with social media, with uh, accessibility, there's no way that we can't do the things that we, we need to do. So I say all of these things because I do care about you. I care about how you're building wealth. I mean, y'all, come on now. I'm out here studying for this series 65 so I can make sure that we not only obtain wealth, but keep it. So we have a money book club, the Money and Flow book club. I realize that a lot of the book clubs that we read is mostly fiction, which I'm all for, but we don't have a book club for women of color and we definitely don't have that many books to read from. So I decided to find all the books from people of color that had to do with money we still don't have a Native American one yet for women, but we're, we're getting there. Baby steps. I'm going to shoot y'all a invite from Zoom. I'll just put it in the show notes. And if you're welcome, if you're available on the 27th on Wednesday, just join the group and we could talk about it. If you haven't read it and you said, well, I'm nervous. I don't really read that much. You can just come and listen to what the book is about. So we're reading Reniqua Allen's It Was All a Dream. It's about the black millennial experience and the lack thereof of the American dream and what that means for us to build wealth. It's pretty deep. I'm not gonna lie. I read it. And I was like, yep, there's a lot of very good points here. So we're gonna talk about that. Please, 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 please make sure that you're liking, subscribing, 
telling your mama, telling your friends about this podcast, y'all. Because at the end of the day, the more people that we help, the more people that we can change. And, you know, it's hard out here for a chick sometimes. Anyways, love you guys. And uh, you can catch me on the Insta. You can catch me on the Twitter. You can catch me on the Facebook. Peace out.